Hello, welcome back to History of Wine and the Vine. I'm Emily Kate. So last lecture, we actually spoke about artifacts. And while we were looking at these artifacts, um, it occurred to me that it'd be a great idea to discuss the art that's found on them. In general, there's three types of historic evidence that we look at. There's direct evidence, which with respect to the history of wine would be amphora with um, sedimentary evidence found in it. There's recorded evidence, which is like papyri or tablets that have record of trade deals or production techniques or um, speaking about the qualities of wine. And then there's illustrative evidence, and this depicts history and myths and culture. Now, illustrative materials cover all aspects of the cultivation of vines, production and consumption of wine, and its use in a range of rituals. It can be found on wall paintings, tomb details, mosaics, bas reliefs, statues, frescoes, tapestries, and of course, vase paintings. So that's what we're gonna focus on today. Now, the, the vase paintings were very important because this kind of decorative art was some of the most beautiful and detailed art of the time. I wanna tell you a little bit about the firing process, so the creative process that went into creating the actual objects. So it happened in three stages. First was the oxidation stage. Now this was where air was let into the kiln and it turned the vase this kind of clay, red clay color that you see here. Then there was something called green wood added and the oxygen supply was drastically reduced. This made the object turn black because there was a lot of smoke. Um, then lastly, the air was reintroduced and this was what kind of allowed the, these patterns to be created because the glossy areas remained black, but the other areas went back to orange. So based on this technique and based on what you see here, right now we're looking at a black figure vase. Now there was one other type of vase and that's a red figure vase. So the black figure vase came first, which is why I chose um, this one to begin with. Now for this, the, black, the background was left the clay color and then the images that were um, produced were produced in black. Then in 530 BC, someone named Andocides actually created the idea to kind of have the negative this, the inverse. And what he did was he colored in, um, in black, the areas that he wanted to be the background, and then he just left these areas um, that you see me pointing at right now to be red. So this is called red figure, and the one we're looking at right now is called black figure. Um, so the first one we're looking at is a terracotta Kylix crater, and if you did uh, watch the um, uh, the previous lecture, you can actually we talked about knowing how to identify um, these craters and the amphora based upon their handles and based upon their bodies. So if you haven't seen that one, do check it out, and it will definitely help you to understand this lecture a bit more. Um, so this was used to mix wine and water. So in ancient times, wine was not really had alone. It was had with water um, to different ratios. This particular uh, crater is actually from the fourth century BC in, in Greece. And um, what's important here is that this is a mythological scene that's being depicted. So this is actually the myth of the judgment of Paris, and it shows two goddesses that are arriving for this event, and one of them is actually identifiable as Athena. So why is this important that it's mythological? Well, it's very indicative of what was commonly put on these um, kylixes and these craters um, is mythological scenes. It was very rare, if not non-existent, to have a contemporary scene depicted, to have a historic scene depicted, um, but they chose these mythic, mythological um, scenes, but they chose ones that had to do with their own lives or ones that they could learn from or mythological scenes that had to do with drinking. Um, so next we're going to look as I flip the page. Next we have this, and what I find really interesting, so first of all, this is a 6th century BC Greek column crater. And you can tell it's a column crater by these handles right here. And this one right here. 
these handles. So what I find interesting about this is clearly um, the idea of having a black background is kind of being toyed with here as you can see the black detailing but they've actually left this type of panel over here which is that terracotta color and then you see the black figure so technically this would be a black figure vase although the majority of the vase is actually black. Now, this, the subject of this one is actually very important as well. So this is um, depicting a chariot. Now, in the Pan-Hellenic Games, the chariot race was actually the most prestigious race, and um, it, only the wealthiest could partake in it because you needed um, to hire a chariot driver to actually enter the competition. So this type of very exclusive, very prestigious subject um, lets us know and actually mirrors the idea that wine is kind of a prestigious and, and elite kind of beverage. Um, so this could have been a showpiece in someone's collection, something that was used to spark conversation or uh, kind of a, an ego stroke to somebody that they either had their um, horses and, and hired a chariot driver and had them in the Panhellenic Games um, or just something to talk about during the symposium. So next over here, we have our first example of a honest to goodness um, red figure vase. Uh, so what's interesting about this is, so this is again a mythological scene, that's Heracles. Um, but what's important to note here is the move towards red figure painting, but at the same time, if you notice over here, so the body does have red figure painting, but if you look up here, you'll actually see that upon the lip, there's been a reversion back, and these are still these black figure paintings. So nothing really happens too quickly, and this was right around the time um, of the switch towards um, the red figure painting. So this is from Greece in 500 BC. Um, and you can see how there's kind of a slow transition. Now, next up, we actually have the full black figure vase. Um, so this I loved and I wanted to bring up because it actually has a lot of, um, of similarities to the lecture that we spoke about, about artifacts. So this is from 460 BC, and it's again a mythological uh, theme. It's a Greek amphora, and it's a classical Greek amphora. Um, and so what we have here is um, two different sides to it. So first we'll look here. This is the side and a man is holding a fiale. Now a fiale, and I'll point to it right here, this is the fiale. And that is a libation bowl. And it's actually being filled um, by a woman who's pouring um, from a jar right over here. Now, if you look on the opposite side, you can actually see a depiction of Dionysus, and he is the one, I'll point to him right here in the middle. Now, he is holding a cantharos um, and standing at an altar. Now, what the cantharos is, is that cup in his hand with the high um, handles. And if you um, can remember back in the artifacts lecture, we actually spoke about the cup of Nestor, and that had elements of the cantharos in it. Um, I think today it kind of looks uh, like a trophy. So what's interesting here um, is that also he, there is a person right over here um, who's actually holding a jug that's almost identical to the jug on the other side. And so that would be where the wine is and he would be pouring it into Dionysus's cup. So as you can see, we have the red figure face with the black background, it is highly glossed. And, um, and then we have the mythological depiction depicting wine and libation, but not depicting any contemporary figures, only depicting it through mythical figures. So I hope that you enjoyed this kind of uh, walk through um, a couple of these terracotta um, vases, and I hope that you learned a little something about what the subject of them are, and I will see you next week. Cheers!